Fractions are going to be a part of the rest of your math career. Whether uh, you take college math or just for your career, it's a part of our everyday. So we want to make sure that you have a, a strong understanding of how they work. So we have to have a way when we don't always have a whole amount. We have to have a way to express when we have a part of something. So fractions are that setup. The top number in a fraction is called the numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. This is called your part over your whole. How many pieces you have out of how many pieces it takes to fill the entire shape. So right here, we have an example of this. The whole entire shape would be how many pieces make up the entire larger square, one, two, three, four. So we express the denominator as four. Then we can either say how many pieces remain or how many pieces are missing. So we have two different fractions that can represent what's going on here depending on what it's asking about. We'll make it for the shaded. There are three out of four shaded pieces, so three fourths. There are three forms that fractions can take. This would be an example of a proper fraction. Proper fractions have the numerator less than the denominator. So because you can't express this in any other way, this is the ideal format because it can't be reduced or simplified or, or converted into whole numbers or anything like that. The other form a fraction can take would be where the numerator is larger than the denominator or when the two numbers are the same. These are improper because these could be rewritten in a different way. If it takes only three pieces to make a whole, I have more than that. I have one and one third. Because this improper fraction can be rewritten in a mixed number format, it's improper. It's improper and uh, for level C generally we switch it then to a mixed number. Level D and on we actually find that improper fractions are more versatile so we're okay with them. But the other reason uh, the when the top number and bottom number are the same we do not write it as a fraction it be, it's because this simplifies to one whole. Why write something as a fraction if I can write it as a whole concrete number? It's easier to work with that way. And then as I show down here, this is an example of a mixed number. The way we get these is we convert an improper to a mixed number by dividing. If I have four pieces and it takes just three to make a whole, I'm able to find out, well, how much does that mean I actually have? So if I divide three out of four, I can take it out one time. When I take out that three, I have one remaining. That one then goes up and becomes my new numerator over my unchanging denominator. The denominators don't change, just the numerators or the whole numbers that they're connected to do. So say you have a number line and you're trying to identify where certain numbers are located on that number line. Anything that falls in between 0 and 1 means it's less than a whole value. And we start with by figuring out, well, how many pieces, how many parts go into the whole? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 marks that make, that are compiled into the one whole value. So then what I do is I find out, well, where's A located? It's one, two, three, four marks out of six marks. So A is located at four sixths on the number line. Now later on, you'll find out that uh, we would never leave a fraction as four sixths. We, we reduce it um, because when we're looking at a fraction, would you rather work with a whole lot of something or simplify it? You know, when you go to the grocery store, you don't grab an apple and put it in your hand and put it in your hand and put it in your hand and have all of these loose apples going everywhere. We simplify it by putting it into one bag. And it's way easier to work with one of something than it is with five of something. So we shrink fractions down to truly understand how much do we have and we simplify it. But we're not worried about that here. It's just something to be aware of 
If you're like, hey, can't you reduce this? Yes, you can. This would reduce down to two thirds. Then, when anything between one and two would have one as a whole number and then a proper fraction attached to this. These would be mixed numbers. So if I'm looking at the location of B, it is past the one, so I know I have one whole. And then I know again that there are six marks that make the whole, so six is gonna be my denominator. And where is B located at? B is located at two marks out of the six it takes to make a whole. C is located at one whole and one, two, three, four, five of the six marks. So that's how I'm able to calculate where my values are at by counting how many marks they are out of how many marks possible to make up the whole. Now the other thing I could do to find out where these values are located is count up the total number of marks. If I'm looking to find out where's B located, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight marks over. And how many marks did it take for me to make, get to one whole? It's six. So it doesn't matter how many marks we have, the amount, the number it takes to make the whole is, is a fixed value. So eight, I'm at mark eight out of six. So because I know this is improper, I want to convert this to a mixed number. So what I do is I take my numerator, eight, and I divide it by my denominator. And let me change my pen colors so this shows up a little bit better. So it takes six to make a whole. How many times can I subtract that from eight? I can take it out once. When I take it out once, I'm left with two. This two goes up and my remainder now becomes the numerator of my accompanying fraction. So B is located at one and two six marks. So that's just the second way to do it. You divide your numerator by your denominator. If you have 16 over four, 16 over four, four goes into 16 four whole times, with no left. So sometimes when you reduce or divide the bottom into the top, it actually turns into a whole number and that's fine. Then you don't even need to worry about fractions because it went in evenly. You can also convert a mixed number into an improper fraction. So if I go to C here, which I know was located at one and five, six, when we multiply and divide fractions, we can't do it when they are in a mixed number form, so I need to be able to convert them to improper. And the way we do that is we take our denominator and we multiply it by our whole number. Six times one. Well, if I have six times one, I have six. But then I had some left over that didn't go in evenly. I had five. So I go six times one plus five. So that gives me 11 six. Okay, so it doesn't matter what your number is, if I have a three and two thirds, this three here says that if it takes three pieces to make a whole, I was able to do that three times. So that's why we take the denominator and multiply it by the whole number. So three times three gives me nine. And when I took out those nine pieces, I still had two left over that couldn't be taken out evenly. So I'm going to add those two to the nine to get my total of 11 thirds. And that's your introduction to fractions.